Utini, what's up friends? Welcome in. We are talking about Obi-Wan Kenobi part one. And you're like, why are you doing this the day of the third episode? That's a great question. Uh, we were at Star Wars Celebration, Claudia and I. And then uh, Disneyland. And then Disney, <laughs> and then Disneyland, a lot of Galaxy's Edge. And a lot of Galaxy's Edge. Nerdy and Clarus were with us. So we really just have had zero chance to record this. And so yeah, we will be covering Kenobi from here on out. We will also be dropping episode three's review later today, so that'll be much more timely. Um, <laughs> like a week more timely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so going forward, it, it'll, it'll be normal. It's just uh, Star Wars Celebration was chaos, and so was Disneyland after that. And then we were just really tired yesterday. <laughs> yeah, and then part two of Obi-Wan will also drop. They're going to drop basically the same time. So if you interested in this one, you want to see part two, just go to the next video. It'll be there for you. Woo! So yeah, let's talk about part one, and let's talk about the uh, most the beginning like the intro with the intro which is skippable because it's not technically the kenobi show it is a culmination of obi-wan and anakin's dynamic with an emotional music going on and uh from the time that they shake hands uh, to their connection to qui-gon uh and their their love and then their brutal brutal parting it, it, it was a culmination also Padme, you can't forget the influence yeah, of yeah, Padme. yeah absolutely Padme was a huge part where of that the children went like all of it yeah in fact um the last thing that is said in that uh i think before we get to the episode I, i'm pretty sure is she says there's good in him there's good in him obi-wan and you know before she passes away and that's something we talked about on the podcast with nerdy and i we all have kind of said like that's going to come into play like he this this those words are going to stick in his mind and it looks like they always have and yeah so that, i think it was a great opening uh I, I guess it's a good summary for some reason you're watching this and have never seen the prequels i i would be shocked if that were the just case to brush up on it honestly if yeah you no it's them great recently it was just like a very emotional it was very well edited together oh, it sets i really the enjoyed it yeah um you know, one thing I wish there was was some of the Clone Wars elements just that we've been going through because their friendship is so close. But I understand that they didn't want to add it into live action. Right. I was a little, uh, yeah, from an editing perspective, since the live action show, it would have looked a little off throwing in those edits. But at the same time, I was, I will admit I was a little surprised because it would have, I think, fleshed it out even further, especially caught yeah. up people who had not seen it. But I get it. Especially because you see the closeness of their friendship going from, you know, yeah. Master and Padawan to, you know. You see more on. of the dynamic uh, little things. Then they could have taken some uh, little conversations or just like big moments from the Clone Wars and put them in there. But you're right. I, I get it. Like it, it would have been weird having the animation and the live action at the same time. Right. So uh, but that said, it was very emotional for me. Uh, it really set the tone for me. And I think it did for a lot of people. I thought it was really well done. Like Claudia said, it's very well edited. I yeah, and it and it does. It sets the mood, which, especially when we start with a bang. Yeah, going to the Jedi Temple during Execute Order yeah. sixty six. Yeah, you know? that was interesting. I didn't expect to go back there in the first scene. We were a little concerned. We're like, we're not going to see younglings die, are we? Are yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so so we open with like a Jedi training Padawans, like younglings. Uh, fun fact about that Jedi. Fun fact about that Jedi. That Jedi is the actress and stunt double of Ming, aka uh, Fennec, Fennec Shan, Shan, in Boba Fett. So it was really cool, and you can tell very athletic. She is really putting off. I mean, she's not in it for very long. But she puts on a show and really sets the tone. She also see like how you know overrun they were like she still took down quite a few she took clones. a lot of clones down but it, it's simple they were surprised they yeah. got surprised and they're spread throughout the galaxy very thin there's not even that many jedi at the temple like if, if it had been like in episode one they wouldn't have lost like yeah. the, there would have been so many jedi there like yes they go on peace missions and stuff like that but they've never been spread so thin you could even see it like you had an aerial view at one point after she dies and like when the kids are running away and you see there's really only a few Jedi spread throughout the floor, but a ton of clone troopers. Yep. So like they and it was at night they like all that was very calculated. And of course, that, you know, calls back to Palpatine and, you know, how well he did a good job of being an evil son of a bitch. Uh, but he did a great <laughs> job. No, like it was very strategic. And the reason I think we're seeing the scene, though, it has not been explained. It has to be that one of them is Reva. 
for me. It has to be. Like, that is the only reason we would go back to that moment. And it can opinion. only be Riva because there wasn't any other species. Because we were like, oh, maybe it's the whole yeah, the Inquisitor other... Squad. We, we watched it again last night. And I was like, they're not other species. She's in the that only group. human. Yeah. And so. also, I think there's a reference, you know, a little bit further into the episode when they are on Tatooine. He's like, you know, we got you from the gutter. You are not like us. Yeah. I think so. She... I think she's separate. Like, I think they're saying yeah. the gutter is like, you know, you came from. She was a Jedi. Jedi well, yeah. well, but the, the thing is, almost all Inquisitors really are jet, former Jedi, Jedi. or Padawans. So I, I am a little fuzzy on why they said that to her. And uh, I, I think that's something we're going to flesh out more and something we're going to go into more about Reva as we kind of talk about this further. My guess is she actually does make it out somehow and that she is barely surviving on her own somewhere, literally probably in the depths of Coruscant, and they somehow find her. Yeah, it uh, could be like a similar story as like Han Solo in the sense of like... It's a guess. Yeah, Coruscant is tough and... Oh, yeah. Coruscant goes down so far. Like, so that's just a guess because like... But it's going to be explained, obviously. And... So that was a really interesting opening scene. And honestly, it calls back to the prequels in a way that I'm like, man, I, I, the prequels looked good for their time. Too much green screen and stuff like that. But it was new technology and everything back then. So like, I get it. But We're still 20 years after Attack 20, of the Clones. 20 so. years after Attack of the Clones to see the prequels look like this. Uh, I don't want them remade you know at the same time. You know what also looks great 20 years later? Obi-Wan Kenobi or Ewan McGregor. Let's go. <laughs> so, so Daddy Kenobi. Before we get to Daddy Kenobi, so we so we open with that scene and then we go, what? We go straight into the Inquisitors, basically landing on Tatooine. And they clearly have a presence there. They've clearly been there before because everyone seems to know who they are right off yep. the bat. They're unknown. Ten years um, after Revenge of the Sith, the Inquisitors are very successful. Uh, they are, they've hunted down a lot of Jedi um, I think the plan always was to have it was all the plan was always to have the Inquisitors because no matter how well you do your job, Palpatine, you know that there's not going to be everybody back at the temple. Just not going to happen. They're not all going to filter back in either. Well, so. it's also part of his plan originally. Exactly. He didn't want them all to be there. Nah, if nah. Yoda and Mace Windu were well, protecting the temple at that time, a lot of the clone troopers killed their generals while right. out and about. That was that was how you got majority of them, and then the rest at the temple, and then the stragglers who either weren't near their clones or they got away somehow. This is how you do it. You hunt them down, but you know that they're spread thin and they're being hunted constantly. So, like, you have the advantage at all times. So they're not worried about it. Uh, but it, you can tell through the conversation of between the Grand Inquisitor and Reva at one point that they are looking for scraps because they pretty much found how they feel. Almost everyone. They're like, they're like they don't exist anymore. Yeah. Except no. for, like, a big Jedi, uh, one named Obi-Wan Kenobi, which Reva is obsessed with. And we don't really know why. Uh, we have an interesting scene at the cantina, uh, but it is, it's good. It's a little predictable, like a, not a bad way, but like we know that the Inquisitors know how the Jedi think. Yeah, uh, they, they chase themselves and they're not wrong. They're not exactly wrong. Like, right, the Jedi have in, in like a thousand years or plus or whatever, have not had to be, they haven't been on the run. They've never been uh, by themselves. Uh, and they've always been peacekeepers and people that stand up for people that are being, you know, uh, mistreated. Mistreated. So they kind of can't help it. They care. And they... It's their downfall because so, they're easily spotted. So they exploit that weakness, especially in a galaxy where the Empire rules with their iron fists after 10 years. And the Inquisitors don't mind inflicting pain on anyone. So it was very easy to flush out that Jedi. Uh, I think Nari was his name. And so we fast forward and we go to Obi-Wan and he's just, you know, working a quote unquote, I guess, normal job, you could call it. I mean, for a Jedi, he's working a normal yeah, a job. Yeah, meat factory, basically. Also, where's that meat coming from? Banthas. Yeah, it's never really touched on what that yeah, meat I comes from. It, I don't. I don't think it's his. Like, what are the? What's the animal he rides? I've always been bad at those it's names an for e, some reason. Right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. So yeah, he. There was one debate between myself, Claudia, and Nerdy. And again, we'll deep dive down this in the podcast. But uh, this is our review for the YouTube. I don't know if he's stealing it or if they're aware of it. The reason I think he's the re the problem if he's if he's stealing it is because. He does it so obviously somebody should notice. Right. But if he's not stealing it and they know, then it kind of contradicts the character of the foreman who is running the show there because he literally gives some worker half the pay. And then, and then pushes, pushes him. punches yeah. him, basically, and threatens him. So, like, does that seem like the type of guy that would just let you, like, Also, take like, some... if you're only taking, like, half portions, like, you just took, like, a whole portion of me. And also, how do you get enough credits when you've been living, you know, for 10 years yeah. to buy 
it's, from our lovely <laughs> Jawa friend that we were going to talk about. Uh, so it's not really a big deal. It's not. It's like a little tiny thing that doesn't even doesn't. Really but we want to go in and do We just thought it was. That. We just thought it was funny because uh, um, he just does it so obviously. The only thing I can think of is the foreman is focusing on the people that are punching out and making sure they don't get the. They don't. They don't do anything shady. That because he does hang back, right? So like that's my only guess. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so then we move forward, and you know Obi Wan uh, clearly is completely on his own. He goes and gets his his uh, his ride. And he goes all the way out to like the Obi Wan cave, which calls back to Ben Kenobi in A New Hope. That's where we, that's where Luke basically kind of goes and finds him eventually. Well, on accident, right? He gets attacked by Tusken Raiders, but R2 finds him, sort of. And he's there and uh, he has this little thing, like this little like um, alert thing that goes when he gets there to make sure, like, hey, if somebody's, somebody's there, in there, lets him know, which like he's taking all the precautions in the world and doing his best to blend in because you know he he wanted to help the guy that was getting you know uh, bullied by the foreman but you know he you saw in his eyes and he's like nah can't do it no like, can't do it won't do it uh survival is more important to him right now and so he goes in no big deal it's, just, it's, it's literally just a cave like obi-wan is living living like I, the jedi don't live luxuriously in general they don't have possessions and stuff but like the temple's pretty cushy okay like it's got beds it's yeah. got beds we've seen the inside of it in the movies it looks very nice this is a far departure from being a jedi it really is and i think all the setting is reflecting that and then we get then he makes like this stew that kind of looks like the bread that comes up in force awakens that was a really cool effect because uh, i think it was fairly practical and then we get tika which is uh our ja jawa friend our jawa representative uh, yes. we, we sent tika uh, and Tika is Coming hilarious. Coming in hot. Coming He's in like, hot. I can you smell you from, you know, pretty far away. Might be she. I, I'm, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to assume it's gender. Either way, they are uh, hilarious. And yes, are calling out Obi-Wan and needing a bath. Nope. Uh, but where do you where do you bathe in a place like that? I don't really know. Right. He's and literally living in a cave. Living in a cave and also working on a meat factory. Like Oh, God. He does probably smell pretty bad. It's really weird to see... Uh, like our hero from the Clone Wars. So broken. So broken and so smelly. Uh, because Tika comments on it like three times. <laughs> yeah, he <laughs> also is, is peak Jawa in the sense of like, Day. it's a peak Jawa. We're good. Um, where they, he's like, oh, you know, there's this problem with my filtration or whatever, uh, our processor unit. Evaporator. Evaporator. The evaporator uh, makes a loud noise and Tika's trying to sell them the toy. Yeah, the cl parts of the ship from the, the T-16 oh. uh, that Luke you see playing with in A New Hope. So another callback. Yep. And um, from there, he's like, you know, oh, I can give you this. Oh, I happen processor to have a processor unit. unit. Yeah, yeah. He's like, can you clean it before you he give it back? Cleaning costs extra. Like, doesn't even <laughs> deny it. Well, he says, Tika, if you're going to steal from me, could you at least clean it before you hand it back to me? And Tika, I love that the Jawa just doesn't deny it. It's of course just, not. It's like, so funny. It's, it's just within like, their nature. Absolutely not. And just like deadpan, even though it's a different language, you can kind of hear the deadpan of like, because it's like a small pause and it's like, cleaning costs extra. <laughs> I love it. As a Jawa chatter, I mean, I'm obviously biased and I love the Jawas and they're hilarious. And I think Tika is definitely my favorite. And I love that we got a lot of, a good amount of screen time for that Jawa. It was yeah, just, just the interaction. You it, know, was it was fun. And so clearly Obi-Wan doesn't really have friends. He says bye to Tika. And then we move on and uh, he... Drops off the plane stuff. He, he, drops off, he drops off the toy uh, because, you know, he checks on Luke. Luke, which we saw in the trailer. Luke's like 10 years old at this point. Uh, he clearly dreams of not being on that farm. Uh, yep. You can tell as he like, you know, kind of bails on Owen to go pretend like he's flying a ship. And then eventually that night, yeah, he does and goes and secretly drops it off. And on his way back, um, he is stopped by the Jedi that we found, Nira, I believe is his name, uh, that was stopped in the cantina and almost captured. The only reason he wasn't is because Reva was literally trying to slice him in uh, two parts. And the Grand Inquisitor wants to interrogate him, which is ironic that she wants to cut him down because she has the ability, we find out later, of um, like Kylo Ren. She can like penetrate their mind. But we found that out in the second episode. Yeah, well. You know, if you've watched this, you've watched the second episode. Sure. But yes. Uh, so it, 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 but if on hindsight, it, it is interesting, but it's because she views it as less than beneath them. She doesn't care. She wants one Jedi and one Jedi only, Kenobi. But we don't know why. Anyway, so this guy goes and finds Obi Wan because, I mean, Obi Wan's a famous Jedi. You have to remember this. 
He is not... There's like 10,000 Jedi at some point. He's one of the most famous Jedi. Like, everyone in the Jedi Temple probably knows him. At one point, he's on the council, and that alone makes him famous. But he's also done a lot of, like, hope high-profile things during the war. You can look at uh, Cato Nemodia's one from uh, the book, like the book that's called Brotherhood. That's just one example, one small example. Not, you don't need a book, really, just the war itself. Uh, so he recognizes him. Um, he even says that, like, I saw you in the canteen. I wasn't sure if it was you, but, like, like Obi-Wan. Like, he calls him Obi-Wan. doesn't call him Ben. He calls him Obi-Wan. And he's, like, desperate for help from him. And it was hard to watch Obi-Wan, first off, try to pretend like he wasn't Obi-Wan, as if, like, they, yeah, that's not going to happen. The guy knows him. And it, it was hard. He was pleading for his help, and he just kept turning him down. And he basically said, you want my help? Go bury that lightsaber in the middle of the desert and pretend it never existed and go live a normal life. Yep. Uh, and He's like, what about helping the people? What about the resistance? He's like, it is the time of the Jedi is over. It is interesting seeing the mindset of the guy that's on the run compared to the guy that's hiding. The guy that's on the run still has this weird, ambitious hope that the Jedi are going to protect everybody and do all these things. That's not the like Obi Wan. I will give credit. Obi Wan might be downtrodden and broken, but he is realistic because this the, isn't the time for resistance. No, the there more isn't... the more you pop up your head as a Jedi, the the bigger chance you're not gonna be able to help anybody. They'll just kill you. Uh, so it, it is interesting to see the mindset. That said, those words that he said cut pretty deep. He said, "What happened to you?" Like he goes from being excited to see him because he's like he saw Obi Wan as like this hope. But he know he doesn't know the story. He doesn't know that you know, Anakin's uh, descendant is there, Luke, uh, and that's all that Obi Wan really cares about is protecting him. And the, if he makes a, himself known, he, he risks that, and he can't tell anybody either. Uh, but it was it was hard to watch this guy go from how much hope he saw when he had Obi Wan to being just crushed as Obi Wan rode away. Yep. Without a second thought, and so that was rough. That was a rough scene. And not too long after that, Obi-Wan is in town, and they found him. They, well, not yet. Remember, first, they it's the Inquisitors are there, and they see Owen. And oh, Owen had yeah. gone to talk to... So, so we saw the line from the trailer where Obi-Wan is getting his um, his ride again, and Owen throws the T-16 toy down. And it's like, we don't want this from you. We don't need anything from, from you. you. Leave us alone. Don't come near us. He hates him. Like, he straight up hates him. Which is interesting. I mean, it, it it works for A New Hope, right? Because they definitely are not on speaking terms at all. He doesn't want him anywhere near Luke. So that, that I mean, that, that tracks. Why he feels that way, though, so strongly, my guess is, um, you know, they did hang out with Anakin for a while. Um, and he knows how hard Anakin fell. And I think he partially blames Obi-Wan. Well, he thinks that Obi-Wan killed Anakin. Right. He thinks yeah. that. Well, so well, does Obi-Wan. Well, that's the thing is like when we watched that first episode, I thought he already knew that I he thought was he already Vader. Did too. And that's what I thought he meant. And then when we rewatched it, I was like, oh, he's like killed he's him. upset you killed him. Which I was like, oh. Well, was- then also, you know, the fall of the Jedi and, you know, um, I think as the local townspeople, you were kind of feeling that squeeze too, even though you have nothing to do with this. Like I would get probably a little bit resentful as well. Like, you know, the Inquisitors well, are harassing especially them. Especially Reva. Reva's like, you know, first where to take your hands. And she does take someone's hands. She's like, don't you have no jurisdiction here because you're in the outer rim? Me it takes off. Oh no, hand. Empire has the whole jurisdiction. They don't care. Well, I know, but like even the Inquisitors are like, Reva, you're out of line. You're unhinged. Oh, that's because um interrogation tactics or just in general finding out information. Basically, if you start making somebody so scared, they'll tell you anything you want to hear, first of all, uh, whether it's true or not. She's she's way over the top. And if you go that way, you will not get any information or you won't get the information. And if you kill somebody, you're definitely getting zero information. So, yeah, she's just she's she's too unhinged even for an And she's like, she's beneath me there. But this one is beneath me because she's obsessed and they see it. She's like, you're obsessed. We can't focus on this one target. We haven't found him in 10 years. We're not going to find him. We need to focus on what we can find. And. For whatever reason, she's obsessed. And like she now is doing this in public. Uh, the, and again, if, if the people are too fearful of you, you'll never get anything from them. The, the, or you'll get stuff that's not even true. Right. So, so like it doesn't make sense. And that's why even the Inquisitor is like, you got to chill. Like we, we're, we're in complete control here. You don't need to overdo to it do these methods we are going to find them right and that they do that obviously when it snaps back with owen and she's like oh do you have like a family and like w- are you hiding a jedi there he's like i have no love for the jedi he means that he's like i think they're vermin and on my farm i kill vermin and i was like 
Yep. Okay. He's, that, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's when we found out how Owen feels not just about Obi Wan, but about Jedi, in, Jedi general. in general. And I don't. And and like I find that really fascinating. I I I don't think he hated Anakin or anything. So I think maybe he sort of viewed Anakin's family very briefly. Though they didn't really have much interaction. So I kind of find that interesting that he would take that so personally that he killed. Maybe because of his mother. Like his mother totally talked about Anakin a lot. Yeah, no, it's true. And, you know, also taking in a kid that now doesn't have a father, uh, you know, that's. And he may just have some things about the, you know, Jedi that they don't like. Like you take away kids when they're young, they never get to see them. them. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, no, Anakin's true. mother was probably like, gosh, I miss my son. Like, I don't understand the Jedi way in the sense There's of like. There's probably a lot behind the statement. And, but I think a lot of it still has to play with after they fell. Because after they fell, you got to look at it as the common people. Like, it all went to shit. Yeah. And you kind of blame them because you're like, you were supposed to like protect, protect us. us. And you didn't. But if you're in the outer rim, you probably feel even worse about it because when you're out of the rim, like we saw episode one, right? They're not, the, the Republic and the Jedi weren't out there. No. So people were being taken advantage of, being put into slavery, being like all these things. So like. It's no different under no, either rule. Except it gets worse. Yeah. Now they're being harassed by Inquisitors. Now they're being harassed by the Empire. And like, wow, you really couldn't even keep your own BS over on your side of the sure. galaxy. So like, really, you've just made this so much worse for us. So like, I get it. Like, I really do like understand where Owen and probably the normal people are coming from. Um, but unlike some of the people who definitely like have some kind of hope or have love for the Jedi, like the Cantina, they were trying to protect that guy. Uh, Owen doesn't feel that way, and but Owen has a lot of personal ties to this, so I, yeah. I get it. And you know, eventually they, the they get Reva to chill, but she still threatens Owen and walks away. And Obi Wan thanks him, and he's like, "I didn't do it for you." He he's doing it for really for Luke. Uh, if he at the end of the day, it is weird. Like he won't give up Obi Wan, but he doesn't want Obi Wan near Luke. Right. But I think that's because if he gives up Obi-Wan, it creates a direct tie to him, which creates a direct tie to Luke and Aunt Beru. So, like, it'll get them killed. So, I really think it's just self-preservation, uh, not because he has any love for Obi-Wan. Yeah. And so then after this, we pan away and we go to Alderaan before it is blown to shreds. Yes. Of course, after Reva has another confrontation with one of the Inquisitors. Well, first it was the Grand Inquisitor. Now it's the uh, third, third brother. Third brother. Like, which all, by the way, Every, like I know people complain about Grand Inquisitor because he doesn't look exactly like Rebels. I think he still looks really good, and the actors doing a phenomenal oh, job. Very and threatening. All the Inquisitors are doing a great job. Uh, one of them is played by the, one of the actors from Fast and Furious. He's doing. He, I don't even recognize the guy. He's doing so good. Like I, I'm loving it so far. So yeah, we go to Alderaan, which is if you listen to the podcast, I called out that I wanted to see Alderaan. I wanted. To, really be there for a significant amount of time and that is what we do for about almost half this episode yep. uh we go to alderaan and it's beautiful really hope nothing happens to it uh and and we get another thing that we called out uh and that i i specifically called out and was like wanted we weren't sure it would happen but we get kid leia and we get we were surprised though we got a lot we got Kid Brea Lake. too. We got Brea. Which, you know, we've never seen in live action. I haven't read. Have you? Is it in any of the Clone Wars? No, because it's after. So it's only the books, right? Which one? The books for Brea. We don't get it in any other. Parts. Oh, no. We get a very brief shot of her and Bale uh, on Alderaan at the Let's end of Revenge of the Sith, like holding baby Leia. That's really it. I don't right. even think it's the same. I don't even know if it's the same I actress. I should have looked into it. I doubt but it. But we get Bale too. We just get the whole Organa family, which True. is amazing. And. Uh, we find out pretty quick that Kid Leia is like adult Leia. She's sassy as hell. Uh, she questions smart. a lot. She's yep. super smart for a kid, which I've met some kids like that. It's crazy how smart she is. And she questions everything. She doesn't just accept things, uh, which is not... I mean, there are adults that don't do that. So, like, it's really interesting. Uh, I love the kid actress i think she's doing a phenomenal job so many lines such great delivery i know that there's been a lot of people that have said otherwise but i think she is doing great she's doing fantastic she's so funny she's so cute and she really does encompass what leia becomes exactly she encompass what leia becomes and there's even an interesting conversation at one point uh later in the episode where her and bale are talking and she he's like talking about her being a center he's like i don't want to be a center he's like that's probably why you'll make the best center yeah, because and you'll be a leader because you don't want to be a leader. You don't, we don't but, want to be a politician be a politician, but yeah. you do it out of duty. That's really how it should be. So I really thought that was interesting. 
Uh, I love the droid. We got we got a cute droid. We want to know what the cute droid would be, and it's a Lola. new droid. Lola, this little saucer looking thing. It's like a ladybug. It's like a ladybug. Yeah, it really is definitely modeled after a ladybug. It's so so cute, uh, and it follows her everywhere. Yeah. And and I like the prank of you know her getting ready, but it's not her getting ready, and it's like she thought you would think this was funny. Yeah, I love how the I love how they're uh, handmaiden. I, I got I'll call them handmaids because I doubt they're servants. I, I don't think they are. So the handmaids are kind of like bow their heads like that oh, crap. <laughs> Because they had to have known they were putting the clothes on her. <laughs> this is not oh, like they, 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 it were, would be funny. they were in on it, uh, which was great. And, uh, you know, then we have the interaction with Brea and she pretends like she's apologizing to her mom while sticking her hand in her pocket to grab Lola. Yep. <laughs> this child is devious. Uh, Brea's got a handful. Uh, Brea is great. She is a concerned normal parent. Like she really is. I think Brea is very grounded um maybe some people might see her as strict but they're trying to raise somebody who's not only their as their daughter but also, a leader a but leader also could be a very hard risk for yeah, her in life. secret they are trying yeah. to raise her uh without anyone asking questions and the more attention they draw on themselves uh the more they are clearly worried about that so like i get it she's probably on edge all the time i think they both are and yeah. i i really do like that's fair like owen Honestly, not that tough. You're out on the farm, middle of nowhere, middle of nowhere in the galaxy. No one cares. Alderaan, lo- eyes royalty, on senator, they care. And you have a lot of eyes on you. So they play it very carefully, which we find out Leia doesn't really leave the planet for this reason. Uh, she talks to her cousin, who's a jerk. And she claps back. She claps back real hard, which is really funny. She did like an Owen level clap back, yep. if not more. And it was brutal, and it was funny, and I loved her response when they tried to get her apologized. She's like, "I'd rather be eaten by a jack beast or whatever it's called." And I was like, "Yeah, you get it, kid. Tell him. Tell, Tell him." Then she goes and says, oh, "Yeah," and she has a heartfelt thing with Bale, and she's like, "Yeah, I'll apologize." And then she runs to the woods again. <laughs> and then we see the worst chase right, scene. So then, um, overall, I will just say before we get to the end of this episode, I I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. The only negative I have, the true only negative I have, like the little thing about the meat, not a big deal is this one. The chase scene is one of the worst things I've ever seen. Of Bumbling any. over branches. I'm like, how are you bounty hunters if you're falling over this little bit of obstacles? They're, they're mercenaries. I don't think they're bounty hunters, but even if they Whatever. were, it doesn't really matter. You're an adult chasing a 10-year-old. She doesn't run track as far as I know. And yeah, she attracts time. I saw one that had a branch that came up to their shins, and they're like, oh, I can't go over that. I'm going to go around. I'm like, are you kidding yeah, me? It's tough and the to way watch. they were running looks like they were stumbling at all times. I'm like, this doesn't, like... It's the woods, not Maybe it ice. was like after they had spice, which we'll talk about in the second episode. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe they were high. It's the only thing I can figure out. Uh, it, it's a chase scene that is really just there to um, create tension, have them kill one of the guards, and um, trying to see like if or when maybe Bale and them will the guards will find her. But clearly not. Uh, th- I think this could have been much better done. Just like just snagger. And be done with it. And you like, get a shot, a guard on the, the way. A guard walks out as they grab her and tries to get a shot off and they kill him and they bail. Like, what? Like that was unnecessary. That was the only part um, of the episode that I just like rolled my eyes at and still did the second time around. So I watched it twice. Uh, and then so from there, we we are pretty much done for the most part at Alderaan. Uh, we go back to Obi-Wan who, you know, goes home home after he sees the strung up jedi yeah sorry he sees the strung up jedi which i think again was his name was nari yep and yeah he he's not like hung or anything he's just hung by like his shoulders so i think they're trying to make sure it was not too graphic but they had killed him the inquisitors killed him and left him there as a message which i found interesting they must have they probably they probably questioned him and then figured out he knows not almost nothing and then like strung him up so uh or they just killed him right outright but claudia also had a theory that maybe it was the townspeople which might be possible. I'm not saying that's impossible because they may have just gotten sick of being constantly in fear and harassed and they figured this was a way out. Like we're on that side, so please stay away from our business. The reason that might be possible is because if they were to question him, I'm not sure they would have strung him up that quickly. So either one could be possible. There wasn't really- So would they go to the effort of stringing him up? I don't know. Oh, they could. The Quizzers, that's why I think it might also still be the Quizzers because it sends really a message. Know. Like, I don't, I feel like they wouldn't, they would just like kill him and hand him over, not necessarily string him up. So that's why I think it's the Inquisitors. Yep, yeah, that's fair. It was just a thought. I was like, well, maybe because yeah. like they wanted the, you know, ransom, they wanted whatever, but I have no idea. 
Oh, there's no ransom. This is just like this is a this is the well. Old they said there's credits for if you have information or if you find them. Yeah, well, they'd probably just kill you anyways. Uh, so we go to Obi Wan who goes home after seeing this horrific thing, and you know, kind of definitely like blames himself a bit, I'm sure. And he gets home and uh, he gets a you hear a beeping like from a comm basically, and. He sees it in a drawer or whatever he sees it in. And tucked away. Tucked away in a box or whatever. And he's very surprised to see it. You can see it on his face. Like, was not expecting the communication. Probably hasn't spoken to whoever it is in a long time. And it's Bale and Brea. And they straight up say, like, someone took her. Yep. And we don't know where they are. We don't know how. They were ready. They knew where she was going to be. Like, all this thing. And they're pleading with him, like, oh, please, you have to go. The other ones we trust. You all have of to it. go get her. And he's like, I can't. He's like, I'm, I'm not that guy anymore. He's like, find someone else is what he ends he's like, call. find someone else and ends it. And it's it's brutal because they are like, they, have, they can't ask anyone else, right? Because they no can't. No one else knows how important she is. They literally say that. You're they, the only one that knows how important she is to this galaxy. Right. So they can't tell anybody. Uh, and again, they don't really have much lead. But I guess apparently they get one because we go back to Obi-Wan um after he goes to work after whatever. he goes of he gets off another shift we, we show another shift him taking the meat etc going home whatever and he gets home at the front door and the alert goes off that someone's there it's, his ring doorbell his star door wars ring doorbell <laughs> it's red instead of blue so he knows someone's there and we get there and you know we're going back and forth because like a lot of qui-gon's been dropped in this episode a lot of mentions like, of talk to, and even in the recap they talk about like you know i'm gonna teach you how to communicate with your old master basically right and that was supposed to be the revenge of the sith and then liam neeson got in a horrible motorcycle accident he's okay but like couldn't do this and also he's calling he's like you know if if there's any time for us to to talk like i need your help yeah he just keeps hoping he's gonna hear from him because he's really struggling um i don't know why i thought it was qui-gon though because that was silly because qui-gon hasn't really actually learned how to physically manifest the force he has enough to the point where he can at least talk to him. So, like, that was silly of me to think that. I just didn't know who it was. I just, my brain, you know, my we brain just went. just want to see Liam. <laughs> yeah, I just want to see Qui-Gon Jinn again. What can I say? So, it's Bale. And he has find out found out at least where Leia's going, which is Dayu, planet we've never heard of. And he begs him again, basically. And But this time, he's more pushy. Yeah. He goes, because when Obi-Wan tries to, like. He's like, I have to watch the boy. He's, he's like, like, it's not even about this. And you know it. He's like, that's not what it also, is. Also, they're both as important. There's not one more that's child. That's what he said. Yeah. He's like, she's just as important. And he's like, and that's not even the reason. And you, and he's like, and you know it. And, and you know, Obi-Wan, like, gives in. It's like, I, I can't. I don't think I can do it. I, I'm not that guy anymore. I, I don't I don't know how be to that be that guy. And basically. he's like, he's like, you have to be that guy. Yeah. I need you to be that guy. And you're the only person. I trust in the entire galaxy. You're the this. person I trust the most with her um and he you know he just he he you know he he calls to his heart basically and obi-wan is clearly this is the most broken we've seen him as this conversation i think the one previous with bale and brea was the first and this one's the second to me and the conversation with the jedi and we just get a very picture a big picture of like obi-wan is lost total faith in himself he 100 percent blamed himself for anakin and probably everything that happened um, 10 years ago. Yeah, well, because he thinks he killed his Padawan. And he can't help with anybody or do anything. And he knows it. He feels helpless. Um, Alone. He doesn't. Yeah. So so we we pan out like we go to the next scene and he's. In the Dune Sea. He's in. He's ironically in the middle of the desert digging up a box. And we knew this was going to be his lightsaber. Not just his. Anakin's as well. Because eventually he has to give that lightsaber to Luke. And he digs it out and he gets his. And then we basically go to him walking up to the spaceport. And the ticket person is like, Are you coming or yeah, not? Yeah, he just kind of stands there and stares at his decision, like, Am I really going to do this? And she's like, Are you coming or not? And he does. And he does. And we see the flash of the lightsaber on his hilt. So he does. He did take it with him. So I might hide that a little better. Yeah, me too. Uh, and that's that's it. That's the end of the episode. It's a long episode, which is why this review is probably a bit longer because like it's 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 almost an 52 hour. Fifty-two minutes. Yeah. yeah. And the next one's about forty-ish. So uh, when you include the beginning opening, if you include that, it's almost an hour. So overall, I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was a great setup, a great start to the show. Uh, I think it really like had a, good, a lot of good callbacks and a lot of good uh, emotional ties to everything else we've seen. And yeah, he's doing a phenomenal job going from this sarcastic, um, confident Obi-Wan to being a broken human. He's he's human. He's not. He doesn't feel like a Jedi anymore. He doesn't feel like it either. So it's interesting. Yep. I completely agree. It was really just the chasing. That's the only negative I have that for the chasing. Yeah. yeah, it was a great first episode. The recap was phenomenal. 
wasn't expecting it either. Um, yeah. But I, I think it really added to the emotional arc of like, you know, how broken is Obi-Wan after very, this? Very, very broken, apparently. And you know, how dedicated is he to the mission of, you know, protecting not just Luke, but Leia. Yeah, I, I really just think it more comes down as not that he doesn't care. He just he just doesn't think he can do it. He doesn't, he doesn't feel think he, he doesn't think he can do I mean, anything. He's been cut off from the force for so long. But well, we don't really find that out till the next episode. But we kind of assumed if he hasn't been. Oh down. yeah, the guy's not playing around with the force or anything. He's not. He not swing his lightsaber around. He's not. He's not. If lifting. he buried his lightsaber in the sea, oh yeah, kind and of he's never here. using the force because he he has to keep hidden. So like yep. it's been a bit for this guy. Uh, so he, not only on top of all his regrets and failures that he feels uh, on top of being completely out of practice. I mean, he's a very powerful Jedi, but it doesn't matter if you don't, you know, if you don't use it. You kind of lose it for a while. Ten years. That's a long time to not flex a muscle, so to speak. Yep. So it'll be interesting. So, yeah. Um, thanks so much for watching, everybody. Uh, if you want to see episode two review, don't worry. It is dropped today as well. You can go ahead and check that out right now. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And again, episode three review will be up later today. Utini friends, and may the force be with you. Bye.